Fear Not Denison's Parade is here, aka the bringer of rain, aka father of the sea and sun, aka king of the core. And today, before I introduce my very special guest, I want to welcome you to the Core Creators Podcast, where I interview creators across the Holonet. And today, we have a very, very special guest, and I've been looking forward to talking to him for a very long time, a true denizen of Disneyland, a droid smith of the Droid Smiths Union, an ambassador of Batu, an Etsy entrepreneur, the Burgundy 16 of Burgundy Squadron. I have none other than Mars from that corner in Coruscant. Hello, sir. How are you? Hello, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing excellent, man. I'm doing excellent. I have so many questions for you because I've been following you for a while. And, you know, you're in Burgundy Squad and you're constantly posting and it's great. It's fantastic. But I want to know, the people want to know, where does this all start for you? Star Wars, cosplay, all that stuff. I'm curious. So... Uh, I am, despite how old I am, um, <laughs> I am not, I would consider myself more of an adult Star Wars fan. Okay. Okay. So, uh, I didn't get to watch Star Wars probably until my 20 something. Really? So my first Star Wars, um, movie was Phantom Menace. Oh, no so way. 25, 25 years ago. I was in high school. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. And, and, and. I mean, I've heard of Star Wars. Of course. And back then, because how... And this is... I'm exaggerating. Uh, how traumatized I am with Star Trek, because it was boring. <laughs> and, I mean, growing up in Indonesia and then Australia, Star Trek was on TV, right? Cause yeah, it's yeah, more yeah. To watch it. Um, and I didn't really like the whole exploration part. It was... Okay. Sorry. I apologize <laughs> for the that there. It was a bit boring for me, exploration. <laughs> the views of uh, the Rain Coyer podcast <laughs> is not reflected by the guests. No, I, I, yeah. I understand. Star Trek is not for everybody. I, I like it. I like yeah, it. Yeah, I'm enough. more into the ship dogfight, not like you gotcha. know, is doing this. <laughs> yeah. Um, Fair enough. So, because of that, I'm like, yeah, probably it's going to be like Star Trek. I'm not going to watch it, right? Sure, sure. And then. Oh, um, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So, and then Phantom Manus happened, and it was like kind of cool you know there's lightsabers i mean you know saber swords i call it like <laughs> laser swords right back then um and then I, you know life happens high school college nothing happens uh and then until basically so i was a very casual star wars fan up to this point like i love rock rogue one is my favorite um i watched uh you know episode seven eight and then uh, it didn't really get kicked off until probably get my visit, my very first visit to Galaxy's Edge. Oh wow! Okay, so pretty pretty new for you. Nice. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, like really, really jump into right. before the you know the whole snowball into Etsy and everything else. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I got my wife to thank for it because uh, that was my birthday gift to go to Disneyland. Because okay. we we were not annual pass holders by then. It was just my I think I believe it was my fortieth, thirty ninth or fortieth birthday present from my wife. You can go to Disneyland and you can go build a lightsaber. You, by the way, you don't look a day over like your mid twenties. Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm forty three. <laughs> I think I think our group kind of skews older anyway. But yeah, yeah. No, you, you, you look young. You look young. You look good. Yeah. You know, it's the Asian gene. To right, right, like, right. And then we all look like Kuman too. <laughs> It'll hit later. It'll hit later. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, as soon as we hit Galaxy's Edge, and I was like, oh my god, this is an awesome playground. And then, but it happened in, you know, December 2019. Yeah. So, that's right before the pandemic. Right. And... I had so much hype of going to Disneyland, and I'm thinking, oh, man, I'm, I, you know, I want to go again, and then pandemic happened. Mm. The park closed for over a year. Yeah. So I think me not liking being, um, I guess, restrained okay. by the fact that I can't go again kind of just exaggerates everything. I'm like, oh, I want to find all the Star Wars content. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then at that point, so another side hustle that i do i i i used to co-own a, a battle map business mats by mars 
Okay. Uh, for D and D, like miniature wargaming. So I had three D printers, like for my D and D games, and they're just sitting there because of COVID. So at that point, I'm like, okay, there are several factors that led me into opening the Etsy. Like one, I had three D printers not doing anything, and my wife's like, dude, if you're not gonna do anything to it, sell it. And right. I'm like, mm, right. They're tools, right? Like. You you don't sell a hammer just because it's you you don't need to use it. Sure, sure, yeah. Because you're gonna need it one day, right? That yeah. you know, strange block that you can use somewhere later, you know. Right. And then um, that number two, I was like, wait, the last costume. Well, that wasn't a costume. It was more like a bound, right? Because I I don't t- usually wear earth colors, but then I looked oh. at Batu and everything was earth colors mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so i start buying you know like something that looks kind of militaristic like cargo like brown cargos yeah um and then i was like there's something missing and i didn't even know the the, the word greebly back then <laughs> yeah this is all like new yeah <laughs> yeah this is super new and then i was like wait oh so there's this thing called greebly i'm like wait i can design it that's really easy like because at that point i was already learning um tinkercat okay so I was just making things by myself, and I was like, wait, this is a good skill for me to have. And I started making um, the little ones. Like, they're about, you know, two inch by one inch, and you can put them on your collar or whatever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I put them onto the um, either the uh, Mubo's Droid Builders Club or the Black Spire Bounding Group. And then people were like, where can I get it? I'm like, okay, I'll just take orders through PayPal. And then I was like... This is getting ridiculous. I have to write <laughs> everything by hand. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then I got to make sure that, you know, I, I got to keep track and tracking over, uh, like, Facebook Messenger. Like, this is stupid. You know, I know Etsy's going to get a cut from this. Let's just create an Etsy. And then more and more and more. And then suddenly they announced that Star Cruiser was going to open. Mm. So that kicked me into high gear. I'm like, okay, I had an agreement with my wife that because she was already kind of iffy about Mass by Mars. It didn't take off until like seven years. Oh, okay. Okay. So when I told her, hey, I'm going to have an Etsy store. Uh, and then I'm going <laughs> to use it. Uh, yeah. And then I'm going to use this as our fun money. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And she was just like, uh huh. Like she wasn't even paying attention. She was like, uh-huh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 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 You do whatever. <laughs> and then I had an idea. Okay. Star Cruiser is going to happen. So I asked my wife, like, hey, can I go if I can afford it? Like without affecting all of the other adult mm. stuff. We have to pay for of course yeah um and she was like yeah sure whatever you know <laughs> so and then i start working really hard and i just start creating a lot of different ge- greeblies i remember uh, that yeah yeah and then and it just start ramping up uh you know i, I guess i was born an engineer like <laughs> like everything that i see you know i try to deconstruct try to replicate it and then eventually you know i upgrade myself from tinkercad to uh what do you call it? Fusion. Okay. I'm not really uh, familiar with the 3D printing world. That's all new from. That's all new. That's all new to me. Yeah. Like, I mean, the the printing part was not new. Okay. But the designing part was mm, new. Understood. Because I was printing 3D miniatures that I can buy. Right. 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 Like right. Brains, like figures. Yeah. Um. And and it, you know it just snowballed, snowballed, snowballed. Star Cruiser happened. I got to go to Star Cruiser. I got to know a lot of people in the community. Uh, like, you know, Commander Maddox is one of the first people that you know supported uh, my my endeavors. Yeah. Uh, got me, Midrim Rebel, everyone else. You know, so everything could just kind of sm- snowball into that. But the core of it is from the droid building. Okay. Okay. Um, so I was part of the Mubos, or I'm I'm still part of the Mubos. Uh, Droid Depot Club, or the custom droid stuff, mm-hmm. and then it led me into the whole Droid Smith Union costuming, which now leads into something even bigger. Uh, like we have five hundred. Like today, we just hit five hundred members. Wow! Yeah, yeah. yeah. And close to two hundred fifty registered member, meaning they all have their unique ID number. I've seen that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I tend to have a habit of getting into something knowing that I don't have much time for it, and then it ended up snowballing into something a lot bigger. So there's this Burgundy Squad, there's Droid Smith Union, there's the Droid Builders Club, <laughs> there's the Galactic Mercantile Guild. Oh, yeah, yeah that's awesome. I too. also started that. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that was you. Okay, I was curious yeah. how that all started, yeah. 
Yeah, I, I started out with like mm, ten other people because mm-hmm. uh, the way that I see it was we're all on Etsy, we're all on Instagram. It's kind of like if you're on the same planet, it's one row of marketplace where hey, you need something? Oh, go to that side. You know, so it's some someone who can vouch each other and they don't we don't step on each other's toe. We tell each other what we're releasing, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah that's, we're at yeah. Thir- 13 shop, I think right now. Oh wow. Yeah, cuz I seen you guys post it um and uh it's pretty great that you guys collaborate on the stuff you guys are going to show. Yeah. I yeah. love that. I, I believe right now the one that collabed with the most is uh, my shop with others like uh, Maddox's shops. Uh, I, I have a lot of input on like Moss Gracchus and basically I try to dabble in everything. <laughs> yeah. I think you're in good company because I feel like I, I say it all the time. Burgundy Squadron is this like a, a think tank of creative people. And mm-hmm. even, you know, Droid Smith Union and, and, you know, when you guys were doing Mubos, I remember that. And it's just like, these people exist and now they're just finding each other and you know, now they can share and we can have fun together. And I think that's pretty awesome because otherwise it does feel a little lonesome kind of doing stuff by yourself. Um, and so like, you know, shout out to, you know, Billy for even just getting that Burgundy squadron thing together. But, um, but yeah, that's awesome, man. I I love that. I didn't know you were the, the inception of uh, mercantile guild. That's pretty cool. uh, I was arrogantly approaching people (laughs) saying, Hey, your print could be better. <laughs> and then, I mean, I did say it respectfully. I think yeah, your print is better. Respect. Yeah. And I would love to be able to help you. Right, right. <laughs> but I, I, I believe I have uh, I have to credit uh, the the core group of the Droid Smith Union that increases my, enhances my creativity. They're, they're my, you know, sounding board. Um, because that whole droid community was just eye-opening for me like yes i love lightsaber i you know i collect lightsabers it's just <laughs> droid speaks to me a bit more and I, I have you know things to express my creativity to yeah okay um, so could you explain for me i mean even for myself what is the the elevator pitch or the droid smith union pitch for what you guys are so uh we are droid smiths that think of it as space it Okay. Right, like uh, sp- uh, and and each one of us could have our own shop. Uh, I my character started off working at in Droid Depot. Okay. Uh, but in the story, in his story, uh, the first time that he was uh, get sent for a mobile service uh, ticket, it was to the Star Cruiser. But because he was taken over by the First Order, he wasn't able to fulfill his service ticket to clean up uh, SK six two zero. So by that time, he got back. He got fired from Droid Depot. Now he has his own shop, um, and he ended up having to collect that much, like so much money, to go into the Star Cruiser for the second time to cl- to clear his conscience and the service ticket, uh, and did it on the first night instead of the second uh, because he found out that there is some kind of Groundhog Day thing is happening. Oh, okay. Because it's a, I mean, in the storyline, Star Cruiser is repetitive. It's the same oh, day. Oh right, same right, 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 yeah, right. Same right. with Bot Two. It's the same day. Yeah. So he noticed that. So he he knows that if he waits for the second day to get to service SK, he's never gonna see him again. Mm. So he went straight from the first day, and he came back. Um, the ending of, I mean, the 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 continuous ending of Mars's story is now he's secretly part of Burgundy Squad. Uh, he has his own shop, which is called that Corner and Coruscant. And now he has a daughter that he has to train to to be a droid smith. <laughs> That's awesome. That's amazing. How does I, I like taking stories for from real life stuff? Oh, of course. I mean, that's the best. The best stories come from you know art imitating life. Life you know uh-huh. imitating art. It's it's secular, right? Um, how does one join the droid smiths union? What's the oh yeah? Sorry, that, I got distracted. No, it's okay. <laughs> so um, so the whole idea was. There is one, we call him Droid Smith Prime, or at least I call him Droid Smith Prime. His name is Ryan. He's a reactive 3401 or something on, on, on uh, Instagram. So he's always been Droid Smith. And he's, he has no other character. He is the Droid Smith. <laughs> so 
so I and then we met over uh, at Mubo's Dread Builders Club, and I was like, hey, dude, like, can I join you? Like, do you mind if I copy some of your style? And he's like, yeah, yeah, go ahead. And then my easiest way to do that was because Droid Depot sell patches that says Droid Depot. Right. Right. So I was like, okay, I'll just create one. And it's like, what? What does the significance of the numbers? Like, oh, those are just numbers that I use. I'm like, can we use that as ID? And it was just more like winging it until seven other people believe that you could do it too, and then suddenly we're like. 500 members strong. <laughs> uh, but the criteria of being a droidsmith it is we have only one rule. Um, the one rule is there's no Star Wars political affiliation on your suit. Oh. Meaning um, you, you can't have any rebel insignia. Mm -hmm. But if you do support them, you can hide them somewhere, like in your collar. Mm. And then that doesn't extend to your equipment. Because the way that I see it, like your backpack, for example, it could be, you know, you're making a delivery to the rebel outposts or resistance outposts and you're carrying, you know, whatever they're doing, right? Um, so, and and I don't consider the accessories that you're wearing as part of the costuming part. Okay. And you are not limited to a jumpsuit as well. Hmm. As long as you look like a mechanic... Um, you know, if you want to look like Babu Freak, that's your choice, <laughs> right? So, you know, because my shop safety is different than your shop sh safety. Right, right, right. That's pretty awesome. So, who did they reach out to? Is it like, are you kind of like heading the union or Prime? Does he does he take care of uh, like Prime? Is more of a hands off kind of person. He's yeah. like, all right, I'm the prime example, but I'm just gonna do you know my thing. But yeah, then yeah. When it, every time we have a group thing we always get together um yeah. basically there's the core group that i call the core group um there's no particular leader it's just because i was the one that started copying ryan yeah uh so i'm kind of like the de, de facto uh like i don't like being like the single head. yeah i don't like being <laughs> the single head uh and and the approval process is so easy as long as you just don't have any political affiliation yeah you post your work in progress. You get assigned by with a number that you select first. Okay. Uh, and and you're part of the Droid Smith Union. Very like, cool. The, the approval process is really easy, and yeah. we want them to make it open that way. You know, little kids can join, and yeah. everybody is an OC. Oh, okay, I didn't know that either. That's cool. Yeah, and then I mean, the unspoken rule is basically just, you know, be respectful of the park's rules. Uh, you know, you are a representative of a group. If anything happened that you cause a problem to uh, the entire group, then we're going to have a problem with you. Right. Fair enough. Fair enough. That should be any responsibility of any group, you know, or, or as a representative you know, of any group. Like, while we're being kids, but, you know, please stay an adult. <laughs> 100%. 100 How many droids do you have? Um, including my Lolas, probably. Oh, Lolas, yeah. Just right under twenty. Oh wow! Yeah, I didn't know I was that like many. <laughs> three big Lolas, five small Lolas, but five or s five R unit, three C unit. I have a fair uh, a C that I convert to a fairy. Three B BB unit, the battle droid. A BD and a Do. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. Um, I only have, I only have, well, actually I, I technically have three if we counting Lola's, but I do have Chopper. He's my favorite droid. And uh, I haven't got into. Yeah, I have both uh, the live action Chopper and the cartoon. The build. Or, yeah. 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 Cause you like, I, I've seen a bunch of people kind of go deep on the, on the droid customization. It's crazy. I mean, on Ryan top of what you can. over a hundred. That's yeah, crazy man. That's because every meetup he always brings some something new, and he does commission too. <laughs> That's awesome. And those things take a lot of batteries. <laughs> it does take a lot of batteries. A lot of batteries. And, like another, you know, great droidsmith. So Ryan was the first droidsmith, and he has a he had a, a friend. His name is Michael uh, Tuner. T oh yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen his. Yeah, I follow. Um, he's I consider him the second because there were originally there were four of them 
that carried the backpack. Okay, okay. I love that. And two of them kind of just disappeared. Oh, uh, okay. So the first OG generation is Michael and Ryan left. Gotcha. And and both of them does commission. And Michael paints really, really fast. Yeah. Like, I commissioned my BD, uh, Fennec. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. So, this guy, Michael painted it for yeah, me. Yeah, I remember that. So, one of my friend uh, Aaron dropped him off at 5 o'clock uh, in the afternoon. By 9 o'clock, he sends me a picture. Hey, dude, it's done. Can you pick it up tomorrow? I was like, huh? And I know you have a background in painting. Uh, yeah. minis I, I i love i mean we've talked a little bit about it before i love dnd i have a, a, a collection of minis and i paint minis too and to turn around something that large in what was that four hours and have it dropped off at your place that's that's wild yeah yeah <laughs> i i painted minis for competition so yeah like one time i've painted a pair of eyes for 15 hours so I not get how anyone can get, you know, a droid done in four hours. Yeah, like the paint's not even dry. <laughs> it's like what? In oh, well, <laughs> it depends. If you use Montana brand, it's really sure, bad. sure, sure. What, what's your what's your go to brand? What's your go to? So right now for for anything one one scale, uh, Montana is basically be the the base coat of things uh, because okay. they dry really really quick. Okay, gotcha. It's 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 meant for graffiti artists. Oh, so tag. And then just go, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the um, the color choices, there's pl- like a lot mm. compared to Rustoleum or whatever. Yeah. Um, and and they're strong, uh, meaning like it's hard to get to scratch them. Got it, got it. Yeah. Okay. I think someone, I don't know if it was Billy or somebody else who was telling me about Montana. It's not the first time I've heard about it. And then for the details, I use my miniature paints because that's what I have. Like you know, uh, I have a whole collection of paint station but like right now i'm really into the brand called pro acryl by uh, okay. monument hobbies okay okay yeah um, um i use a lot of p3 that's what i started with and i just never run out of that <laughs> then... yeah like my first well my second collection of it's p3 because it was it was easy to blend yeah i really like i really like the colors p3 i mean vallejo vallejo primer i swear by and uh citadel of course i feel like that's the easiest thing anyone could get their hands on um, and then I haven't tried the contrast paint. I sh- I've been meaning to. But... It's pretty good if you're doing something just, you know, the three feet rule. Yeah. 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 Um, where does, so does art come first or does hobbying come first when it, when you started? When it comes to miniature, the art comes first. Okay. I do enjoy building the miniature. Mm-hmm. But I enjoy the painting more. So if in a hierarchical uh, thing, so I would say the painting is first, second is the building, the third would be playing the miniatures. Yeah. How long have yeah. you been involved in tabletop gaming? Like how far does that go back? Uh, when I was 15, 16. Oh, so oh yeah. War- Warhammer 40K was in second edition. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's 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 been a while. Like, <laughs> it, it was just a shame that I wasn't able to bring my miniatures from Australia, because when when I went to high school there, that's when I started, mm-hmm. and then I had to take it all back to Indonesia. By the time it hits Indonesia, I don't know what happened oh, to it. Oh man! Yeah, my dad was only able to find like one bag of it left, <sighs> and then he sent it here, and I was repainting those uh, uh, like old miniatures. Yeah. Some yeah. of the miniatures still had lead in it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's how they used to make them back then. Yeah, and then um, when I was here, you know, life happens, college happens, uh, and then roughly about ten years ago, I started painting again because um, I got into Mordheim again. I don't oh, okay. know if you're familiar with that game. I don't think so. So it's set in the Warhammer fantasy uh, setting. Okay. Uh, uh, this is prior to Age of Zigmar. Okay. And it is about instead of playing with a huge armies, you're playing with like maybe ten to fifteen, uh, and then it's a war band that you progress. You know, they could have injuries that sustains the whole campaign and things like that. So I was paint. I was going into that, and then I created a business, and I I played another game called Malifaux. I was really into that. 
Uh, and then the business just kept going. I started going to a lot more conventions, <laughs> and then I learned about competition painting. Yeah, yeah. And snowball into just like, oh wait, there's like prizes in this. <laughs> yeah, like mo- monetary yeah. prizes. Yeah, and then I got into professional uh, miniature painting. Like a couple of uh, publishers asked me to paint their minis as their their studio models. That's awesome, man. Yeah, yeah, and then now I'm just translating everything to like one one scale or whatever the droid scale is as well. So I was I was I was happier because at this scale your mistakes looks deliberate. Right. Yeah. 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 Like you, Star Wars isn't clean unless you are from I don't know four thousand level of Coruscant. Yeah. Canto bite maybe like yeah. Yeah. So anything scratches works even better. And yeah. it actually took me a while to get used to, like, dude, I painted this, like, really smooth, and the line of all is <laughs> and I'm like, I gotta distress this now. Right. I have that issue right now with clothes, because I'm finding pieces, and I'm like, okay, do I keep it clean for everyday wear, or do I dirty it up for bounds? And so I'm kind of, like, in this weird in-between yeah, where I can't like, I, I know that you um, wears bound daily. I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. It's just my every day. So I'm like, I don't know. I think some pieces I could probably, uh, I could probably dirty up because even I like, I look at it and I'm like, it's just not there. It's just not there for me when I'm looking at it. For me, um, for the Droid Smith, I have three jumpsuits right now. Two are clean mm-hmm. and it progresses from Droid Depot, Droid Depot. And then now it's the dot corner of Coruscant. So the last one, because it's my own shop. I was experimenting. I was like, okay, I got paint. I got airbrush. I'm just going to try it. So I added, I started learning how to sew and everything. So yeah. I added like the, the you know, the, um, the pleated uh, shoulders. And I was like, you know, I'm going to try it with acrylic. And then I just start airbrushing things. So it looked like it's, you know, oil stains and everything. Yeah. I seal it with regular, you know, clear coat. Yeah. Washed it, came back. Yeah, it worked. <laughs> That's awesome. I was like, yeah, I guess it's all distressed now. So. <laughs> do you have any um well because you're going to conventions do you have any cosplay background or it was mostly just like the competition and selling or... my very very first cosplay was uh so, so i was doing battle mats right right and right. Then our, our battle mats was being used by critical role you told me that that's amazing yeah. and in the first season there's a character um uh, that was the map maker i remember uh, that yeah his story was he got um, snow. What do you call it? Petrified by basilisk, and then the critic, uh, Fox Machina, broke his arm while he was being <laughs> petrified, and they couldn't get his arm back. Um, and, and I wanted to cosplay as him for Renfair. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so I found the gear, but I was like, I am not gonna tie my hand behind my back. Yeah, it's okay. gonna be ridiculous. Um. So I ended up creating like the, I guess a steampunk version of his hand. Okay. Using foam, so it left like a like a, it kind of looked like a half version of Full Metal Alchemist um, Edward's uh, arm. Arm, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I painted more like brass, like uh, steampunk color, and then I I created a, a quiver wrapped in snake skin that looked like basilisk skin. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to give a nod to that. Yeah. And that's where I put all my maps. Nice. Yeah. So, and then that was my first cosplay ever. That's uh, awesome. And, and I had a good response from the Critical Role cosplayer community. Yeah. Um, that's how I met Gil as well. You know, the, the don't, uh, can you cuss here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't, don't F me, Gil. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Like oh, Gil, the, yeah, the dice maker. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the map maker. So the map maker met the dice maker. So that was... That's awesome. Our connection, yeah. Um, and ever since then, I'm like, oh, maybe I should cosplay more. But I mm. didn't cosplay anything else because I wasn't comfortable in just buying things off of someone. And then, I don't know, like, as a maker, I want to make my own things. I understand that. Yeah. Um you know like i mean nowadays i still buy some stuff but then i usually add my own touch to things i modify things to it 
um, or I ask my friend who can modify it for me. So there's at least a little bit of a custom touch to it. Yeah, there's that weird trade off. It's like time to like make yeah. it, or I'll just buy it, or even commission it off a friend. I like doing that, like just getting commissions off of people I know. Um, that's usually my my go to. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's cool, man. But my, really like my, my very first cosplay in in um star like i guess the galaxy's edge bounding community would be the like full-on cosplay is droid smith okay okay and then you know it's it's always the i just get this one costume for star cruiser and you ended up having a full rack (laughs) i love when you're like when you were like which which outfit do i wear to dinner like everyone vote on what was the best one yeah it's i mean the star cruiser community it's a thing like it's it's a fashion show yeah, yeah, and you guys are putting it on too. It's great. I mean, mid rim, mid rim looks great. You you look great, and uh, it was it was so stressed out. Like, well, should I wear this? And I'm like, honestly, dude, like I'm so worried about my own clothes. <laughs> Yours kind of looked the same because his base was the black gamer crate, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It had different capes to it. I'm like, it looks awesome, <laughs> but I was I was so worried that I'm missing pieces. Oh right. Yeah, that could be. That's even when you like when traveling to cons too. I was like, I feel like I'm missing. I'd have to have lists. I would have my my bin, and then I would have the list taped to it so that I can checklist off. Mm-hmm. Because if you're missing a belt or you know some important attachment, it just kind of throws it throws you off. But uh, you know, p- people won't look that hard. But it for you yeah. as the person wearing it, it, it definitely and, throws it. And off. I post I post those like which one which one should I wear pictures mm-hmm. as a checklist. Oh, <laughs> I can look at myself and I'm like, all right, I'm, I got this, this, and this, and I'm missing, you know. Yeah. What's your favorite piece that you own? Either you created or or you had commissioned or uh, clothing wise? Because I asked this from Billy too. I'm okay. Uh, the piece of clothing that I could probably not live without right now is, I guess, my corner and coruscant jumpsuit. Okay. Because that's how everybody identify me with. <laughs> um, but there, there is a piece of outfit that I wish I could have worn more often. And that's the, the, the Coruscant Mars garb. Which is the black with kind of like a kimono. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, so in the story, that is his last piece of nice clothing left. Got it, got it. The left Coruscant. Was that the one you wore on the Halcyon one? Like the second? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The one that... The, the, I mean, it's very Japanese-ish. Yeah. And, and I actually bought it from... I support this company 100%. And I'm not getting paid. <laughs> no sponsors yet. So no this company is called So So S-O-U dot S-O-U. Okay. It is originally from Japan. They have, like, retail shops there, but they have one in San Francisco here. Oh. Um, so they, they bring authentic Japanese... Um, traditional style and try to modernize it a little bit. Yeah. So when when I went to the store in San Francisco over here, it's like, what do you need this for? Oh, I'm gonna do some Star Wars thing. They're like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> That's yeah, awesome. like, I'm just work. Yeah, I'll have to look that up. I'll have to look that up because I'm I got my tickets for Star Wars Celebration Japan, so I gotta oh, figure out. I gotta figure out something. I gotta figure out something, but that I'm gonna be like a good occasion to do it, right? I think I think so. I think so. But yeah, like it's, it's it's like if you wear it straight, like without any modification, you know, I'm I was so afraid that people are gonna think you know cultural appropriation kind of thing. Sure. But I added stuff to it to make it like, you know, sure, like it kind of look Asian esque. Yeah, but I mean that's what Star but, Wars is—is is like right, like <laughs> Luke is uh, stolen from Ma- Ma- Mothma's husband, right? Yeah, yeah, is completely, completely like very Asian. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, no, I think I mean that was George Lucas took from all the uh, Kurosawa stuff, so it's fine. Yeah, the samurai stuff, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's fine, it's fine. Um, I love when. Okay, so let me let me preface. I remember when Halcyon was going away. And, you know, everyone was pretty heartbroken. I love that you were like, hey, let's, can we turn it into something else? And you were putting ideas out there. Like, you're a very creative person. And I, and I love that you were, like, promoting that stuff. Do you think that they'll do something with it? Or um, is that still kind of unknown from from your 
from what you hear boots on the ground as much as i'm a very positive person i'm also a realist mm. where i know that hope and disney ironically does not go well together sure because <laughs> sure. you're always just gonna get heartbroken understood um so i in my opinion i know that they're going to do something with the building that's what i was thinking i was like it's all there so yeah, the make decor sense. is so nice like it's a waste to tear it down yeah it is a waste um at least a but I've, heard, I've heard occasions of buildings in the disney world property becomes decrep- decrepit because they didn't want to pay the upkeep to keep the let's say ac on i see so the inside becomes moldy and mm. they might have to tear it down Ugh. Uh, there's a couple of rides that it d- d- did happen to them and ended up having to get torn down. Mm. So that's one of my worry. Um, but in that regards, whether they're going to do something or not, I highly doubt that they're able to replicate the exact experience if they are going to water down the experience. Of course. Yeah. Like mm. If it's like a four-hour day trip that anyone can join at a very you know significantly lower cost... As the people who has went uh, gone, uh, we're very lucky to experience it. So yeah. I don't think anybody else can experience the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, I was hoping they would do like a walkthrough or a restaurant or the show at least, you know, in some form or fashion. Because it's like that's not outside of the Disney experience of you know what they already do. Um, yeah, I mean the restaurant's already there, right? Yeah. The kitchen is already there. Yeah. Uh, Basically, you know, if they want to put minimal amount of staff, they could probably do basically a place for photo ops. Yeah. Charge people money just to take pictures there. Mm, yeah. Uh, um, there's rumors about being a dinner and a show kind of thing for a couple of hours. I think that'd be great. Uh, merchandise shop still there. I mean, they already have the IP to just re- redo, I mean, remake all the merch. Yeah, but I mean, you know, they mistakenly call it a hotel, but was it really a hotel? Because you <laughs> sleep basically two, three hours, or maybe yeah. don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, too excited to sleep. <laughs> like you slept because you're tired, not because of like you wanted to go to rest. Right, right. And in your opinion, with hindsight, obviously. Do you think the price tag is still too high if they try to run it back in some form or fashion? Because I know the experience is obviously worth the price, right? Seen videos, yeah. you guys love love it all. But yes. is there ways to make it cheaper um, in, in your opinion? Not without sacrificing some of the service stuff. Because right. if you've been, if you stayed over at a Disney resort, Let's say Art of Animation. Uh, oh, sorry. The the um, the All Star Resort, which is the cheapest Disney World resorts. Okay. You compare that to, let's say, the lowest of. Uh, this is my personal opinion, so don't flag me for it. Like Motel Six would be probably the lowest. Sure. Compare that, and you already see a significant difference, right? Right. Right. And nowadays, the price difference isn't even that much. Hmm. 150 like motel six right. maybe 100 to 150 to 200 for all-star and then you compare that to the medium uh quality for disney world and then you compare that to you know the grand Flor- floridian yeah. which is upwards of 2000 a night yeah same and then you compare that to the star cruiser and on top of that the in-universe um staff and universe food and then on top of that the entertainment and a lot of these cast members becomes you know friends with the people who's gone yeah and and it's it's not something that you know how many times that you've gone to let's say las vegas or whatever you go always to the same hotel and that you remember the staff's name and you're still in contact on IG for two years. Yeah, never, never. <laughs> right? It's it's amazing how what 
this whole thing created. And I don't want to say that this should have cost more, like the house should have cost mm. more. And I'm only saying that because I know some of these people and right. I want my now friends to earn more from what they have to do. Yeah. I think that's deserved. So, cause like the effort they put into not only the main cast that they have, but uh-huh. even the people just helping out with food, helping out with hotel rooms, even the people at Batu even are like, it's just like the Disney, the, the way they do the, you know, galaxy's edge and, the yeah. Disney cast members, they're, they are going above and beyond with service, for sure. Because there, there is, you know, the uh, real-world wide-glove service that other hotel chains can do. Correct. There's the Disney's wide-glove uh, service, and then there's this Halcyon wide-glove service that is completely different. Yeah. And I, me and my wife and I had a mistake of going to the... Um, Atlantis Hotel in Bahamas mm. after we went to Disney World and this is before the Star Cruiser. Mm. Oh my god, the service is like heaven and hell <laughs> difference. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I could imagine. I could imagine. But yeah, I, I, I hope they can do something similar because I think they have something good with Galaxy's Edge. Um, I think marketing wise, there's probably a little bit of missed up with Halcyon, but I think there's something there that they can tap back into to kind of bring to the experience of I'm going to sound I'm going to sound very unfair by saying this. Sure, go ahead. And this is just my opinion. I would say that Hacienda as good as it is, I don't think anybody should try to recreate it. Yes, it is unfair for the people who's never experienced it. Um it's like if you've seen you know one famous Broadway play and suddenly in 2 years they're gone and you never get to see it. Right. Yeah. Some people could have experienced it, but yeah, you know, it, it's nice for the people who actually had the chance to go. Right. And that as you know, finish on a high. Right. Right. And move on to a different project. For sure. For sure. I saying I think there's an experience that they could replicate. I don't think a Halcyon, per se. Yeah. But something similar because like you already have the full immersion um, mm-hmm. at with Batu, and I think it's great. I mean, I want to go back just to be there. Um, yep. and experience that more. Um, Did you see Universal's take on it? No, what's that? There's two new hotels in Universal, part of their their you know the third park expansion. Okay. It looks like a China bootleg version of it, <laughs> and it's just the hotel. So they yeah, make it yeah. like the hotel room has the space, like viewing space. Uh-huh. Things like that. It looked very China bootleg. What What's the theme that they're going? It's with? space. You're oh, staying in space. space. Oh. Yeah, you're staying at a space station kind of thing. It's... Okay. <laughs> they have I forgot something. What the game was. Oh yeah, they have. I mean, they have something good with Nintendo, so they, they might as well. I don't know. It's just, it's just like Star Wars is very niche where you can do or any big enough where you could do something like that. The world building is already like good that you can expand it. It's a proven IP for sure. So it's like, why don't? Right. Just... <laughs> and I mean, even the Halcyon was already iffy to some of the old school Star Wars fans. Like, right. cause it's too clean for Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. Like, dirty it up. Make it, like, more yeah. tattooing style, I mean, maybe. If you dirty, just hang out in the engineering room. <laughs> um, what about, uh, so, now you have, you have, you have a child now. Are you, uh-huh. is, is the, is your, your business, the, what you're doing with Etsy, the Greeblies, is there more that you plan or goals, um, with that or is it kind of like on on hiatus now with the kid or how, how are you so right now with her being in the house still meaning um my wife is still taking her maternity leave mm. and the baby is at the house you know 24 Point 7 yeah. maybe only sometimes when we're out i'm not allowed to spray paint anything outside the you know the vicinity uh in case you know the fume sticks into right, my clothes right uh so when um my wife goes back to work in June. We're going to have my mom to babysit her. And I'm lucky enough to start work early and finish early. I finish by 3 o'clock. So by the time I get home by 4, I have a two-hour window where I can do all the spray paint again. Yeah. Um, and, and, and before I pick her up. Okay. So basically restocks are coming hopefully by June. 
but I need time to get like into the groove again. Yeah. Uh, I mean, another way to do it is, you know, spray painting it with airbrush, but the paint that I use for airbrush is a little bit more expensive than, right. But it hits the cost a bit more. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Uh, yeah, I, I, I get that too. Cause even with, I was doing a lot of foam costuming the, the glue that uses chemicals, like don't breathe it in. You got to wear ventilator and everything. And I was like, uh, ah, sorry, I kind of step away from it for a bit, but I get that. I get that. Yeah, like That's why I, I have stickers and some mm. like ready made stuff like in 3d files in my store. So like right now I'm looking at my store. I'm like, Oh my God, my stores were like super bare bones. <laughs> it'll get back there it'll get back there it'll it'll it'll, it'll yeah, we'll be in June so soon things printed like i just i i can't paint anything <laughs> get it raw get it raw have everyone have everyone painted themselves Dude, i have an ocd with quality control man like i don't i don't even i don't even give out like in batu you know i give away a lot of stuff yeah i don't even give out b b grades <laughs> You're like these are all been R and D. Everything's been, yeah, been checked out. Quality like, control. All my hands are on this, but it's good. It's dirty. It's supposed to be dirty anyway. <laughs> well, dirty what if I have defects in my stuff, man? <laughs> I got you. I get you. Um, any new any plans for like any costumes or any um, upgrades you're gonna do to any of your stuff you got? So I have uh, a, a Mando outfit. That Ooh. was supposed to happen by last October, by last Halloween, but never happened because mm. unexpectedly my wife said that I can go to my second Star Cruiser trip. Yeah. So I concentrated on that. Um, and then I have a Sajo costume that's in the works. Nice. Uh, I am working also on my fourth jumpsuit that is Halcyon themed. Nice. Uh, currently tomorrow I'm dropping off a fifth jumpsuit. <laughs> and someone who can possibly deconstruct it and re recreate because i wanted uh, i wanted to do sammy the mechanic or the, the engineer i don't know from the oh, okay okay yeah, yeah yeah uh so but they only sell the kids um costume of it because they don't want to confuse the adults right? yeah i hate when they did that because there were some good there were some good kids costumes for sure yeah and then a lot of my friends who are a lot smaller than me can fit the xl kids version but i can't so I'm asking someone to deconstruct it, deconstruct it, and then just create a pattern off of it, and hopefully I can commission her to do like the adult version or yeah. maybe even a different color. Okay. Okay. So my brain's always in the works, and this is just the, the costuming part. Like I have plans for my back, like new backpacks. I have plans for droids. <laughs> And I have to prepare for Halcycon as well. The, yeah. The convention. I'm I'm not physically gonna be there. Okay. Uh, but I will be dropping off some stuff because the guild is gonna be there. Okay. So the guild is gonna have a booth, uh, and um, Jedi Forge is is willing to sell, like, be a representative of me. Yeah. And sell my stuff there. Gotcha. Yeah, I was talking to Hollowscan Database that I just had on the show, and he's um was saying he was going to be out there so that's pretty cool i didn't know that they were doing that that's awesome it's a really good opportunity for him to be there yeah like i think when he went on may 2nd his eyes were like this is you know the potential of what his i guess business could be yeah yeah like this is his client <laughs> right here <laughs> you know he could have just wait for this you know the one week of the year every year and it would have been yeah like if he could get all booking that day oh my god yeah and his stuff is so good like the pictures you guys took and that he posted so far has just been immaculate it was so fun that day i know Ugh. i i, I need to get out there i maybe but see the thing is it's like i have this japan trip now so it's like kind of that's my house on i'm like there's nothing nothing else can happen for have you been before japan no okay. japan no okay. I went. I just uh, in February I went to Thailand. So similar yeah. long haul flight and everything, but it'll be my first time to Japan. So I'm excited. Um, if you're doing stuff outside of convention, mm -hmm. I have some uh, food recommendations. Yes, we can talk later. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Because I've been, it, you know, it's always on the bucket list. I'm I'm an old gamer. I, uh, yeah. I used to play video games, and so 
you know, being there in uh, Tokyo Disney, and we're we're trying to figure that part out, and um, the that's Disney a whole scene. different beast too. So, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm looking forward to. It. I think we could do it. I think we could do it. We have the right crew for it. So, um, that trip is uh, it's massive and. All my funding is going to just go to that because even my family, they're like, D23, D- Dapper Day. And I'm like, I, I got to I gotta save for the big you trip. Gotta prioritize certain things. I got to prioritize. I might open up an Etsy store. <laughs> no, I'm selling shirts. I'm selling shirts. RancorClothing.com. You can buy Star Wars shirts there. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, what about uh, lightsabers for you? Uh you said you used to collect, I'm guessing, before before droids? I mean, I still do whenever I have the chance, but the problem yeah. is I don't really like characters' lightsaber. Oh, right. You like OC and... I like OC stuff. The only yeah. OC... I mean, the only character lightsaber that I have is Episode uh, episode 1, Obi-Wan. Uh, that's my oh, favorite. okay. Nice, nice. It's, yeah, it's a good one. It's a reflective of his rebellious na- nature. It has, like, the spikes on the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and that's... I mean, I have the katana uh, ahsoka the, the white ahsokas uh-huh, uh-huh. um that was just because the, the box is pretty yeah <laughs> um, i feel like people are buying them for the boxes now like the, yeah the, and, the... i mean i had it signed by ashley too so i'm like hey. I'm keeping, yeah i'm keeping this for for a bit and then i have like i i'm not a big fan of the legacy sabers too okay because how bulky it is yeah so i have i have the my first savvy um mm. saber and that's because it's my wife's Birthday gift, and that's the that's a reminder of me. That's the first trip, yeah, to Galaxy's Edge. Um, Which one so did you I'll, pick? Which one build did you do? Uh, something in Justice, Peace and Justice, Peace and Justice. Yeah, yeah. I actually like the Savis just because it's like a little bit different because you can like kind of build it yourself. I th- I think that's a cool experience, you know. Um, but you're you're paying the experience, hundred percent. Yeah. 100%. Like I think seventy percent of that cost is the experience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I mean Star Cruiser is basically that. You, that you, but you, just you, like <laughs> hey, yeah, you're it's six, multiplied. It just multiplied, yeah, yeah, for sure. As soon as I got my first Savi and I got into a very, very deep rabbit hole and then I found Neopixel and then uh, yeah, you know, yeah. all the other stuff. Um the the latest um saber that I have is from New Hope Workshops uh, Spirit of Shandala. Oh nice. The Halcyon's yeah the halcyon's uh, training saber he created a neopixel version of it and there's only 50 that guy makes some nice sabers i have yes. to admit a lot it's, of creative people man it's it's insane it's insane yeah. how deep it goes. burgundy too yeah for sure i was just like you see sometimes you can't even keep up to be perfect I, right. I can't keep up with everything going right on. and then especially with a lot of creative people that actually sell stuff like the guild I joke about how we're basically laundering money to each other. <laughs> like we're buying each other stuff. Yeah. I think it's amazing. I think it's awesome. And I, I think it's like, again, it's just creative people finding other creative people. And I love it at this point in time because it's not like you said, you're not stepping on each other's toes. It's not competition. You're like, Hey, let's bring each other up. Let's be a thing together. I love that. I think that's awesome. Um, because you're, we're not finding that too much in the internet anymore. And you know, we're, we're older, we're getting, we're, we're, we're that's a young people game to hate on other people. Yeah. It's, in, it's insane. I have no time to already enjoy myself. Why would I want to spend time to hate other things? hundred percent, hundred percent. Um, okay. So we're getting close to the hour already. It's gone by so fast. I wanted to ask, and I usually ask everybody this what's some advice of that you could give to someone who wants to be a creator, let's say on Etsy or, or make Greeblies or even join or create something like the droid Smith union or Burgundy squad. What, what kind of advice could you give to someone who's like, I, I need something. I want to do something. In my opinion, um, if you are working on a project, yes, you have your adult priorities, real life stuff, and let's say you have a limited amount of time to do your project. You finish that project and run with it until until things that are necessary in your life that needs to happen stops you. Hmm. If you choose to take a break in the middle of it, 
you might not have a chance to go back to it. For example, big example, my Mando project. Right? I've had the armor for like over a year. I have every parts of it. I just haven't got to sand it. And I mean, and and this is with me knowing that we're going to have a child soon. This is prior, right? So I was working on a limited timeline. I knew it was going to happen as whether I can finish or not. But as soon as I already have a child, now I have other things that's preventing me from it. Right? So people are going to say like, oh, just wait until they're toddlers. You might have more time. The emphasis on might. <laughs> yeah. Right? What if I have a second child? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, then run it back. <laughs> right. You know, um, you know what? What if suddenly my child is allergic to any of the resin uh, or yeah. sanding? <laughs> then I can't even oh, have an Etsy, right? <laughs> so my advice is: if you like something at this moment, run the heck out of it until you physically, monetarily cannot do it anymore don't take a break because if you take a break you might not get back to it i love that advice that is great advice yeah you got to see these projects through it's so it's so hard and even i think even too it's like sometimes if it's ready to go it's good enough it's good enough because i do think we could get kind of critical of our own thing you know and uh i have things that and then it's obvious like progression and process like i'm gonna like you know i think i've seen on some of your costumes where they've grown you've added more things you've changed things over time and it's like yeah it just gets better and better as as it goes Um, you'll you'll be surprised how much you've unlocked like you know we joke about being leveling up in life right yeah it's you you're you'll be surprised if you push yourself you'll be surprised how much you can unlock yourself how much you can level up like I had a sewing machine for five years and suddenly I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to try and do it. And I learned how, my first project was the pl- pleated shoulders. <laughs> I'm like, this should be easy, right? No. <laughs> I love that. But now yeah. you're like pleated shoulders. I did that. I could tell people how to do that. And like, people them ask me like, where did you get that? Like, I'm like, Oh, this is just the galaxy's edge. You know, the the scoundrel's vest, I added stuff to it. Painfully, like painfully. <laughs> <laughs> Blood, sweat, and tears for sure. But it, it happened, right? Like, so just keep pushing yourself and, and you'll be able to do it. Because you never know. Like, you could be the next Burgundy Squad. <laughs> Man, that would be crazy. I would love to see another squad, a squad of denizens come out. I thought about it. I thought about it. I thought about it. I was like, oh, it'd be kind of cool to have like little little divisions, you know? I'm not divisions between like little between... niches, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it could be like, you know, the 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 Burgundy Squad, Alien Squad like yeah. what Tony Bob is doing. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that I love the... <laughs> he's, he's training some people to to do like all the Rodian stuff. Dude, it looks awesome. I I mean, I've dipped my hand in to try to cast some things and I'm just like it's it's practice it's it's losing time but you know it's all it all leveling up so you got to get that experience you gotta yeah. you gotta grow because like i know even you have that sewing machine you probably had to watch videos you probably had to you know oh, failed yeah. and tried uh, even with with even miniature painting painting it's all just even know. when i got my airbrush for the first time it's a new tool it's my first six months with it horrible <laughs> yeah horrible <laughs> it's like you're holding a pencil for the first time yeah and then you're like i have to clean this thing out <laughs> like, every time like this time. is dumb like why can't I make things easier like i'll go back to brushes let's just go back to brushes <laughs> so it's you know you're not automatically an expert at things there's not at all i mean there's no easy way to get better 100 percent 100 percent yeah, like the pleated shoulder, you only see one that's completed. It took me four times to get to that point. Right, right. That's so why Billy and was like, it, "Post your face." It me get easier every time. Yeah. <laughs> well, I forgot what they call it. It's just like that. Just our just our creative artistic brains, man. This is how it, it's our it's our blessing and our curse, for yes. sure. <laughs> Nothing is ever complete. 
Nothing is ever perfect. And <laughs> yeah, we are our own. We are our own worst critics. Hundred percent, hundred percent. I, but I can tell you from my perspective, the stuff you make is great. It's amazing. Thank you. You're you're very talented. Um, you, you're beloved in the community for sure. I was Thank I was I, I messaged you because I was watching Ash and Brian's Always Believe, and I was like, look, that's Mars. I know him. <laughs> Yeah, I finally got to see them again for after a while. It's it's been a while because I mean I haven't been back in the park in a while, and then they also have yeah. Alice, right? Yeah, they have a little kid so, too. Yeah, and Brian has been really really good, like friend. Like he's just checking up, like, hey, how's Leia doing? And, That's like, awesome. Yeah, they're such sweet people. I would love I'm, I would love to have them on the show, pick their brains because I met them at celebration, but not in a not in a just as a fan, right? But. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're they're great. I love I love their content. Um, I watch them very consistently. I mean, at this point, I'm also, I, you know, I don't know if they consider me as a friend because I'm a fan, and then he happens to follow my content and he he checks up on me on on when when my wife was on labor, and I was like, oh, this guy's actually like care about my family. Yeah, yeah. Really cool. <laughs> That's a friend, man. That's a friend. Yeah, yeah. That's a friend. And I hope that like everyone that I'm meeting here, when we eventually meet in person, like I consider you guys all homies and friends and stuff. So, I think um, I think it'll be great when I finally, because like I know a lot of you guys are met each other already. I'm like I gotta get, I'm gonna get out there. I'm gonna get out there and meet meet the group. Um, we gotta do some burgundy. Where are you from? Um, from Disneyland. What's that? How far are you from Disneyland? I'm in Sacramento. Oh, okay. I'm yeah, fine. yeah, yeah. And are you so- in the Bay? Or are you in LA? Oh no no no! I'm I'm in like thirty minutes away from Anaheim. Oh, okay okay okay. You were saying San Francisco earlier, so yeah yeah no, no I figured. I, I went to San Francisco a few times. Gotcha gotcha. Yeah yeah I'm not too far. I mean my the plane trip's like an hour. So you're closer than Adam. <laughs> I'm closer than a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, you're closer than Adam, and he comes here. He has an annual pass. <laughs> I just don't I, have I the. People... I know people in Hawaii that has annual pass for Disneyland. <laughs> I just don't have the credits. I don't have the Republican credits to get into Disneyland. As I was like, you need a Nancy. <laughs> I know, right? Buy a shirt at RainCourtClothing.com. <laughs> no, I definitely will will make the time. But again, Japan Celebration is taking president this time. And then... Uh, and then we'll we'll figure it out after. Or if, if some some funds fall into my lap somehow, if I can get into a money laundering scheme like the Mercantile Guild, you'll see me there. Like make, make stickers in in universe stickers. If you already have the graphic design power, dude, they're coming. I got I got some plans. I got some plans. I, I'm, I'm I'm it's uh. If it's you cooking. remember, my magic carrot for the Etsy was Star Cruiser, so yours could be Celebration. Hmm. Something to chase for, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good. That's a nice little idea. I'll definitely stay tuned on on the IG. Where can where can people find you? Speaking of IG, um, uh, I'm at at that corner in Coruscant over uh, on IG. Uh, I'm I believe my channel is also called That Corner in Coruscant on YouTube, but I only have two or three videos. So okay. I'm not <laughs> your droids. Uh, droid escape but I mean I haven't updated in over a year but if people wants to know how to paint a droid easily so yeah I'll... I'm mostly active on IG sure yeah I'll definitely drop uh, the links in the description definitely follow Mars's IG amazing pictures and if you want FOMO as much as I have FOMO definitely follow your Instagram because you're like you're Mr. Hollywood there at, at, at I said Den- Denison to Disney for sure I mean, I I believe the best part of Batu are the people who works there. The Batuan locals are the most colorful people that I've ever met. Yeah, and I hear and, they're and they're great and they're so happy to see you. It's so sad that recently I heard so after the season of the Force, uh-huh. they're getting rid of a lot of those positions. Ugh, why? why? Because okay, okay, I can see both sides of the coin. Sure, sure. So from the business aspect, they're going to think like, oh, their employees are just standing around doing nothing mm. because they don't see the value of creating lifelong friends of their customers. Yeah. I wouldn't have the annual pass for Disneyland if Galaxy's Edge did not give me such a good experience. And it, part of the good experience was because of the people in it. Hmm. 
like I like after I had Leia, and then so it was about two two to three months vacuum uh, of me not going to Batu, and I came to Batu, and nobody that I knew was working there. Oh it man, felt like an empty park for me. Ugh. Dude. It felt completely like a strange, cold place. Yeah. Oh, man. That's tough. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, because, so, I mean, they're cast members, if, so... Yeah, if their position is gone, you only see the people in the rides. Yeah. And the people in the rides' job is to, all right, go. Right. Pilots, engineers, okay, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. You talk to them for three seconds. Yeah, yeah. There's so many visits for me, like in Batu, I just go, chill by the garage, and go back home. Yeah. And just hang out. Man. Hmm. I wonder if there's anything like. I mean, you're posting, you're posting the cast members. That's great. You know the ones that are there, and I was like, oh, that's awesome. You know, kind of giving them their, their, yeah. their, um, their light. But it sucks that like. Fun consider them my friends for sure you know, like, go visit them like uh, if one of them has a birthday you know I'll, I'll bring them gift or something that's awesome yeah we'll support bot too people people watching support those support the yeah. cast members at least at bare minimum if you're going to be there tell them thank you because yeah. you know if, if, you have, if you have an annual pass and then you take your pictures taken download or the pictures because that's how they're mm. getting calculated how many downloads per photos oh I didn't know that okay Let's get to Always that. give cast compliments to people that you interact with because, you know, if people see that uh, people, I mean, I guess are complimenting the, the cast members, you know, they might let them stay. Yeah. That's good tips. Yeah, definitely shout out to the cast members of Batu, the, 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 the locals of Batu, because I think if we, I want to see that place grow for sure and see more from that, you know, even buying the merch like they have a bunch of new merch from May the 4th. I think that's cool. Oh man, I spent so much. <laughs> so much. If your money, if you're, if you have the credits for it, do it. Support Mercantile Guild. Support that corner course and on to Etsy. Support all of. Support all support Star Wars. Wondering. <laughs> we all get to eat. We all get to eat. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, if you guys enjoyed the show, thank you so much for joining us. You're going to find more core creators coming to this podcast. I'm definitely going to have Mars back on because I, I we're just we're just the surface that hour is just not enough time so i'm gonna have to try to pull him away from his family <laughs> pull him thank away from the projects <laughs> it was so thank great you for having letting you. me take a break <laughs> this is a break oh man well I'll, I'll try to grab you for another break uh very soon but um again thank you uh for everyone please like follow comment our, my Instagram, Mars Instagram, all the people we mentioned. Uh, I think there's a great group of people here in this uh, little community that we started and uh, are a part of. But I hope you guys have a great galactic rest of your day. Punch it, Chewy. Boom. Burgundy Squad out. Bye, guys. Bye.